going to be um, making a program using processing. And first, I'm going to show you how to um, download processing. So I'm going to go to processing um, in you know Google, and then just processing download. And then you just go to the um, first link. Should be on processing.org. Um, you have to first check Windows 64, Windows 6, uh, 32, what Mac you have, the Linux system. I went to um, my PC, the properties, and it showed that it had a 64-bit operating system. So that's the system you want to download. So check that um, and make sure you know um, what you need to download. Then you just um, click on it and you start the download. After it's done, it downloads into a zip file. So I open when done. And I will wait for it to open. And okay, now it's open. So you just um, click on it. You should extract it. I kind of had a weird thing where I was waiting for it to extract, okay, extract all. I kind of, you should extract it. So you should click on it. Those are all the files you should have inside. Um, I exited out. I actually have to open it back up again. Um, I'm looking for here. I found it. There it is. Still a zip file. Click on it. Extract. Um, and um, not explore. Extract. Extract all. And um, you have to browse, and you have to choose where you go. I'm gonna just um, extract it to the desktop. Should be a folder then. Um, and once I extract it, it should show the files when complete. Of course, it's going to show my whole desktop. My desktop has a lot of different icons. Um, so it shouldn't actually take that long to install. It takes roughly like a minute if you have a pretty decent uh, computer. Um, so we're just waiting for it here. And at 76%, 84, 85. Um, once it's done, I will show you what the icon looks like. And begins in 90, 91, 92. Talking about processing, it's kind of a Java-based um, program, and it's just a lot simpler to learn, and it's a lot more basic, and it you can write a lot more kind of things. So now it's installed. I'll exit out of there because I don't want to see my whole all my desktop icons because look, it's crazy. I have a ton. Um, okay, I'm just going to move it, put it by um, the other relevant stuff I'm working on. Um, and now I'm just going to open it, and you open the processing application. And um, once it opens, it'll show this message. You can, you know, exit out of it. And um, there's your sketch window. There's your window for... Um, editor for doing any um, programs. Okay, so now that we have a um, file, I'm just going to save as and um, call it um, whatever program you want to call it. So I'm going to call it um, Fractal because that's the thing we're going to be making in this video. And I'm just going to save it to my desktop. So um, now you have to talk about the basic um, stuff you want to add to um, any program in this. For avoid setup it runs one time and it's like the setup function for any um, program. And um, I'm just leaving it blank for now. And then you'll have void, um, void draw, which draws it repeatedly. Any object, any shape. Um, and um, void setup and void draw are kind of like uh, in JavaScript, you might have um, um, other variables. And um, size 600 600 that's basically just drawing a canvas that's um 600 um call um 600 pixels wide and 600 pixels high in the background color i'm just making it zero um zero 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 and that's rgb value so you're actually i'm making it black so um if you do uh 255 for each rgb value you should have a um, black uh, white background and as you can see it's um a black um, canvas um, with nothing on it, of course. 
because I haven't um, did anything to the draw function, haven't added any new shapes or anything. And that's um, about it. So um, I kind of want to create a class. And um, to do that, you have to go, I'm, I'm making it into a new tab so it looks more organized. So we're going to class. Um, I kind of was kind of questioning what should I decide, um, what should I name this? But I'll just name it thing. Um, because, you know, it's just a simple name. You can name it whatever you want. Um, first, you have to um, define the class. So I, uh, it's a class thing. And then parentheses, and then parentheses. And the whole thing has to be in parentheses. And that's the whole class. Everything you talk about in the class has to be within there. All the functionality, all the data, all the, the constructor, all in there. So um, next thing, I'm making the constructor. So it should be thing, um, parentheses, parentheses, kind of uh, curly bracket, and that's the constructor. Continuing on the program, we have to talk about what we're actually making. So we're going to be making a fractal generator um, and a Sierpinski um, triangle fractal. And um, we're going to use the chaos game kind of method for doing it. And it's listed below in the or simply kind of um, or more simply things and that's all the different um, things that need to occur and steps to be able to make this and I will explain that right now first thing you need to do is uh, just plot three points um, you know on a canvas or whatever and then from there you plot a random point anywhere on the canvas it can be inside the triangle it can be outside the triangle and that position is important at, with relation to the other points so then you it's like randomly um, having a three-sided dice and you randomly um, choose one of the points, um, you know, a third of the time randomly. And from there, you um, draw another point that is halfway between the distance between the point you just drew and um, one of the three points that you are um, looking at. And you, you draw halfway. So you calculate the distance halfway and you draw another point there. Then you do the same thing. You iterate again. You do it another time, but you choose a random, one of the random three points at random, and draw another point halfway through. And you continue doing that. And if you do that a lot of times, you get the Sierpinski triangle fractal. And that's what I'll be showing how code to understand and how to um, do that. Okay, so now that we're back into it, we have to kind of look at the thing I said. So now we're, we want to draw three points. Let's just draw the you know beginning three points. Oh, and um, so now I'm going to do some comment lines to kind of understand some stuff. So instead of a hash mark, you don't do a hash mark. You actually do a hashtag mark. You actually do um, two um, backslashes, and that allows you to um, write um, comments to yourself. So I, I just wrote a constructor because that's what that... Um, part of the program is. Now I'm doing two backslashes. I'm writing define class because that is what's happening for that function. It's actually defining the class. Um, and now you write two backslashes declare um, variables. And because anywhere um, up there, that's where you declare your variables. And then you have your constructor. And inside your constructor is where you um, initialize your variables and um, that is very important because if you don't initialize them you just declare them they're just going to be zero by default um, then after that you can write your functionality after con your constructor that's where you uh, write functions and other stuff like that um, past that point and now okay so we wrote um, a class but we need to um, kind of define um, the class in what you're actually reading. And the way to do that is I'm actually making it into an array of classes. So an array of classes, so I'm doing thing, um, bracket, bracket, things equals new thing one. And I'll kind of describe with comments what's actually occurring here. So you first write your type in this case, it's um, the class thing. Then you do two brackets, meaning it kind of makes it array. Then you do the name you want your array 
equals new type and then you're making how many objects you want um, in your array. So in this case we're just doing one so we're only making one. And once you run it again nothing happens because you're not drawing anything right there. Void draw is still empty. There is no functionality. There is no even variables um, defined or variables um, initialized at all. You're just um, you're kind of loading it from a different section. You're declaring it, but you're basically just loading it from a different tab, but you're not doing anything to it. Um, and you're actually not creating it. It's just kind of, it's, it, it's there, but it's not initialized or anything. So now we're going to start talking about um, how to initialize a class. So, or object. Um, because actually it is a class and the class makes an object. So we want to initialize one separate object and the class can make thousands of different objects, but every single, a class makes objects, but objects don't make classes, if you know what I mean. So I'm making a for loop and this is very important. This allows you to make, um, to, um, initialize multiple classes at once and just by their, um, different values. So for int i equals zero. So you're starting um, your kind of list at zero and um, i greater than things.length. Things.length is actually how many objects you have in your array. In this case, it would be, um, in this case, it would be two because zero and one, but because um, everything starts at zero and then i plus plus. So everything, things, um, brackets i equals new thing, what's occurring there is that um, um, you're actually making, um, you're looking at every single time you have things, depending on what your i is, you make as many objects um, as there are. So in this case, you're like initializing all the different things you can possibly initialize based on um, your array um, that we wrote above. And now we're back to the thing. We're going to add more functionality. We're going to add more, um, you know, de declared variables. We're going to add more initialized variables. So first, let's just try to um, draw, um, you know, three points. That's kind of our main goal right now. We're not even into... Um, doing the other part with distances halfway. We're just trying to draw variables. So first off, we do x0 equals something, x y0 equals something. And I'm trying to do zero to start with because I'm trying to show that um, when you write programs, um, counting usually starts at zero and goes from there. And um, I'm not writing anything into it yet, but I will in a second. So first off, um, you know, they kind of, well, first off, I have to fix that because I put, um, I'm just trying to fix my order and have X, then Y, then X, then Y, then X, then Y. Um, now, I'm um, going to actually declare some variables. And it kind of, declaring variables determines like what type the variable is, stuff like that. So in this case, we're just making, um, you know, integer, x0, x1, x2. They're all integers. Now we're doing integer x0, uh, y0, y1, y2. Um, we're just making them integers. And I have to fix this because I kind of want it y2, not x3. I don't know why I put that. Um, so now we're just going to write some stuff to it. Like write some um, initializing what they actually are instead of just being zero. Because if you don't initialize anything, they're just going to be zero from the start. If you declare it but don't initialize, you're going to be zero. So we're putting in values, and then I thought this is kind of a dumb idea. Why don't we put random values? Because that's what we're going to have to do it anyway. So we're going back. We're going to put random values between the. So you might be wondering, like random what? So we're putting width, you can put two values like zero comma width 
and that would make sense. But if you just put one value, it goes from zero to whatever that value is. And it's width is actually looking back at the size in determining how many pixels there are. So it's actually looking at the first value in size and it kind of can read that. So it's actually reading random between 600 pixels um, wide. And for X0, it's re reading random from um, 600 pixels height wise from everything starts zero to zero at the top, the very top left, and it goes to 600 at the 600, 600 at the very bottom right. Now there's a type, um, now I'm just kind of copying in that, um, copying in some more um, width and random um, heights. And copy and paste is not the um, best right now. I don't know. And finally got him in. But there's there's kind of an error that's occurring. And the error is because there's type mismatch. And you can't put random um, integers for random. Because you could get a random that's um, not an integer. You could get um, you know a floating point. So we have to change that to um, declare the variables as floats. Now, now we're actually going to start trying to draw the um, positions we just kind of created. And a good idea is to, we also kind of want to make a, um, a new uh, variable called size. And this will allow us to change the, the size of the points that we draw. So I'm just making it 30 for now. And um, we're doing point um, parentheses um, x0 y0 um, size and size and um, that will draw a point but there is a, th a problem here and the problem is this isn't even in a okay we're making an ellipse because the ellipse it allows us to make it bigger easier easier to see but there's still a problem here and we're going to get to a second and the problem is um, the method is missing so method you have a uh, class that creates objects and an object has functionality and those are called methods now we have to add functionality so let's make a um, you know a function so we're doing void um, display that's the name of the function void display so the name of the function is display and putting into um, squiggly brackets and it, you can't see anything like why can't we see anything well we have ellipse we have the functionality but when we go back to our actual program where we're drawing it we don't we don't show the functionality at all we don't um, we don't kind of say hey um, you know, use this um, function to um, draw the objects. We don't kind of ask for the function. So what we need to do is we do that same for loop as before. And now we do um, what are Reyes things, um, bracket I bracket dot display, parenthesis, parenthesis, colon, or, you know, um, pr not colon, but, um, semicolon and there it runs and it runs and it's black um black background white and you might be wondering why is it white well that's because um you we haven't added any fill or any shape or anything like that so fill registers um the it fills in whatever shape in the middle and so we're just doing 255 zero zero that's actually going to be making it um red and we have to you remember you have to put it inside your um functions and stuff so that's what we kind of screwed up there but we fixed it and now you run it and it's red it's a red dot so that's good so now let's make two more ellipses for the other different sizes mm -hmm. so we're just going to copy and paste and we're just going to change x um zero and y zero to um x1 y1 x2 y2 and um, we're also going to add no stroke and stroke is the outline outside of a shape 
and we're just going to take it off. And um, you don't have to add any arguments into it, and just no stroke, parentheses, parentheses, semicolon, you run that again, and you get three points randomly. And so it actually works. Okay, and now that we're back, and we're looking at this, and we have to add more functionality, because we, we got the three points, we got the start of how um, we want to draw this fractal, but we need, you know, particles to, a random particle to form, and uh, we need to draw it. So, first off, let's just give it a particle x, so its position, particle x for, um, its x position, and particle y for its y position. We're just going to make it random in the window. And there is, um, it's underlined because there, it's not declared at all, so we have to make it um, declared. We're making them float. So there's no error for random. And now it's good. So we have them. Now let's make it a size for it. So if we look at size, there's already a part, uh, no, a, um, a, um, thing called size. So we have to change that to particle size. Um, let's make it 10, but particle size does not exist, so let's just add that again. Now, I was adding here, and you'll see I'm trying to get these, make them a little better, so I'll copy and paste them, make it look a little cleaner, and, like, take up less lines of code, so we don't need all those float lines. And that's good and all. But now we have a problem that particle size, we actually want that an integer, so we actually have to copy that and paste it outside. Now you could put the integers together, and we, we could have did that, we can put all the floats together, but I just wanted to make them separate for each um, kind of type of the, the fractal generator. So now we're going down here, and we want to just draw like the random particle that we created. So we're going to make um, particle x and particle y. And now I'm going to run it. And you can see they're all the same size, but there's four particles. And the, the problem is we didn't change um, the size to make it particle size. So that's what we're going to do now. Now that's particle size. You can see you have three points and then you have one particle. So that's good, that's what we want. But now we need to get into the more important thing of how to generate multiples of them. Of, you know, iterated a bit. So what we wanna do is we want to copy this and take it outside of this function. So we want to make a totally different function, and we'll call it, we'll paste it into a different function, we'll take that ellipse out, and let's call a different function. So we're going to do void iterate, and um, parentheses, parentheses, squiggly bracket, and um, Let's do another bracket. Uh, let's do looking around, kind of trying to brainstorm how we're going to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a variable, kind of like a three-sided dice, but we're going to do random choice equals a random between zero and three. And there's going to be a problem in a second. And the problem is going to be random choices in define. So what we have to do is go back up to the top in the fun. So here we go, making the float a random choice. Now there's different ways to do this, but this is kind of the way I thought of doing it. You could there is, there's other ways of making a three kind of sided kind of choosing thing, but we're gonna do random choice and then if statements, but you could do like a rounding schematic 
somehow. So now we're going to do if random choice is equal to or greater than greater than or equal to zero um, and it is less than one so we're doing random choice um, the two ands actually represent and the you know greater than sign equal means um, greater and equal than and then so you can kind of see the similarities but a little bit different than um, Python and how we go around stuff so this allows us to make um, a so we're looking at particle X and we're changing X now put X equals particle so we're actually every single time we iterate we want to change it and make it half the distance between the, our particle and the random what the random choice calculated as the point we want to be facing so we're going to do um, random particle x plus x0 divided by 2 because that's good and um, you know and then y equals particle um, y plus y0 and then divide by 2. So this is changing the um, where it's located essentially. But there is going to be a, there is a problem. And we'll see that in a second. So we'll try to run it in a second. And we'll see that x and y aren't declared. They're just random variables. What we actually need to do is put particle x and particle y because what we're doing is just changing what the particles location is and that looks good it should uh, work we're gonna add a few more um, if statements we're gonna add two more because we want three and what we're gonna do is just change the parameters so random choice is gonna be to one to the two and then for the third one, we just need to make it greater than or equal to two. And you don't need any um, constraint on the um, the size of it because we already we're only going to go to three anyway. So, and now you take off the, the empty space, and I'll try running this, and you you'll come to wonder like. You can't run it because we haven't added the new functionality into it. So we have to add things um, bracket i bracket that iterate um, parentheses parentheses semicolon. You run it. And something's happening. Something weird is happening. We keep going towards one point, and this is a problem that kind of was kind of frustrating when we were kind of looking at it and I was still thinking about it I, I thought okay well, we need to add a for loop right so a for loop allows it to happen multiple times at once and I wrote this and it, it didn't help it but it actually it made it faster but it didn't help the problem that was occurring so um, again, we make the same for loop in i equals zero, i greater than ten, i plus plus um, parentheses bracket, and then, I mean, you know, curly parentheses, and then I'll make another bracket. So, run it again. We didn't put another bracket in. We put a bracket here. There. Um, I'm just making it look a little better, and we run it again. And the same problems happen. So I'll get back to this, and I'll see you guys in a second with how we solve this problem. Guys, don't concern yourself with the bottom part. That's where I was just kind of running, trying to um, look at different, um, printing different stuff, and looking at um, different values to see if there was an error. And the problem is that 
we didn't change the um, particle plus x plus one, um, y plus one, x, um, x plus um, particle x plus x plus two, x uh, y plus two. And once you do that, then you, it works. But as you can see, it kind of looks pretty kind of sloppy. Um, a problem we could do is just change the particle size, make it a little smaller so we can see it a little bit better, so it's a little more defined. Um, also change the size of the other ellipse, other circles. And once you run that, yeah, it looks a lot better. You can see a pattern form. You can see that the fractal is forming. So we change the size a little smaller, make it even one. And you can see it's working, and but it still looks not the best. So what we're gonna do is see how we can make this a little bit better. A little bit better looking. And I kind of have some ideas, and we'll see what we can go with this. So first off, how about we just, we don't want to see the display. We, oh, yeah, another thing you can do. Okay, so first off, um, because we made this in a rate, we can change and we make multiple objects. So how about we make five? Then there's five different triangles being formed, which is actually really cool. And you can think about, what can you do with this? What, what can you do with multiple, multiple objects? There's a lots of different things. Um, object oriented code is like the basis of a lot of stuff. So functionality, we, do we want to show that display? Maybe not, because it doesn't really look that good to have just, maybe we don't, don't need that, we just need that in the background. And when you see, it's pretty cool, it creates stuff. We'll make it once so you can see it a little bit better. And, but you can see it's like, drawing it but then it's like replacing it with other stuff and you can see the particles are a little moving around a little bit they don't look like they're stationary and the problem is probably because we don't add any stroke um you'll see this a little bit better because the particles they have like they're getting copied but they're they don't look like they're merging into a solid shape so what we should add is a no stroke which is a no outline to the shape and that should help fix the problem and let's also change the fill let's make it let's make it blue let's make it 0, 0, 2, 5. 0 red 0 green just all blue once you run it here now you can see it's working and it's filling it up and it's making a really cool pattern that should